For the first time, we've seen brand new AI products coming to Replit first, and that's really exciting. You may have seen this tweet from our CEO who talked about two specific projects that came to Replit first. And this means it's very, very easy for us to spin up and take for a drive. So let's do that. Now, I spent most of last week fighting with AutoGPT. I was trying to do a video on what you could do with it long form, if it could create websites and full complex things, because I've seen your comments, I know what you're saying, and yes, the examples that we showed were very, very simple. But as it turned out, after spending two full days trying to get AutoGPT to complete something robust and comprehensive, the limitations of the technology as it stood then were that it would just go off and do seemingly random things. It would get distracted. AutoGPT then is very much like an enthusiastic toddler. It wants to learn stuff and it wants to do stuff, but if a bumblebee flies past, that's where the attention goes. So I was looking for some AI software solutions that had a bit more control and a bit more thought. To them. And that's where these two came in. The first is GPT Cancel. Now, first tweeted out by Somewhere's Why here. The idea behind this is really, really cool. What you can do is give a single prompt to multiple different personas of AIs. You set the size of the council, you tell each council member what their role is, and then you set the question. It pulls all the responses together, gives you a summary, a conclusion if it can, and also, and I think this is really cool, tells you how much that cost, which is always a good thing when we're dealing in OpenAI API keys. So how do we get this going? Well, it's a Replit first product. So all we need to do is click to use the template and make a fork of it. And then we need to add in our own OpenAI API key in the secrets manager, just like we've done before. It's the work of a couple of seconds. And then clicking run on your REPL starts the cancel off. How do we use this and what do we use it for? Well, what I'm going to do is start with a really, really obvious example. I'm going to have a council of three, and I'm going to give them roles of different kinds of politicians. A centre-right, a centre-left, and a centrist politician. And I'm going to propose them a question that's been perplexing us in the UK for quite some time. How do we sort out the sewage and rivers problem? Now, you'll see here the answers are coming back from the different personas. And you'll notice that because they're based on these different personas, they are different. And they do have different biases and opinions just like you would if it was a real council of real individuals, which I think is pretty cool. The final summary comes together with, in this case, concise summaries of all of the opinions of the council members, and this costs us about six cents to generate. Now, I think that's a really, really good use case for AI. Getting different opinions from different personas and different ideas is great, especially as individual humans where we have a specific opinion and it's great to hear other voices and dissenting opinion. That's very much what councils, real councils are for. So let's try this again with a different prompt, something a bit more fun. Okay, this time I'm bringing in Warren Buffett and Elon Musk to debate the best strategy for increasing the success of Twitter. <laughs> We've seen some of this in action from one of these people and we'll see how good the AI is at working towards real personas. So the Warren Buffett answer is as you'd expect, it's very businessy. The Elon Musk answer is actually very prescient, isn't it? Remembering that the knowledge base hasn't got anything past 2022. That's really quite prescient that it's picked those things as targets. Uh, the final mm -hmm. summary now will hopefully put a distinction between those two for us. And you'll see we've got four key points from each of them on how we could improve it. Now, with those two distinct opinions, we could probably form some better ideas and suggestions of our own. And again, all this cost was four cents, which is great for some dissenting and different opinions. Now, one more prompt here, a bit, of, bit more fun, is to decide what sort of pet a household can get. We've got a father that secretly likes cats but doesn't really want to do anything with them. We've got a mum that loves dogs, but again, is worried about the responsibilities falling on her. And we've got a child who just wants a pet. Now the prompt here is fun because when we ask it what sort of pet we should get, I, I think these are quite well thought out and, and robust suggestions. Although we are starting to get the as an AI language model stuff popping up regularly. But the summary is really cool and does show those different attitudes and, and different ways forward. 
the child summary there is particularly great because it gives you actual strategies that we can use to motivate the child to engage with the pet a bit more. And actually, if I was a family doing that, that'd be great. Here's one that's a bit more fun. I'm going to set the council members to be Batman and Spider-Man and ask them who would win in a fight. <laughs> you can see there that we're getting a bit more of that as an AI language model stuff going on and maybe I can work a bit more to massage that prompt to make sure they speak properly there. But we are getting some good justifications about who would win and clearly Batman thinks Batman would win and Spider-Man thinks Spider-Man would win. So not quite the decisive decision we wanted there. Here's an interesting one. I'm going to set up a crypto fan, CryptoBoy86, versus Samantha Normington, an old style investment banker. And they're going to give me some advice on whether I should invest in Bitcoin. Now, as I'm writing this, Bitcoin is currently $22,871 per Bitcoin and is up 66.6 .6 year to date. So, probably a good place for Bitcoin to be. I'm not a crypto person, but let's see what they say. So, Okay, interestingly here, the, the crypto enthusiast is giving me some sensible advice. It's not just saying dump it all in, it's saying, you know, um, it seems like a good idea, but I really like the answer of the um, the other council member because there's a personally I wouldn't. And the summaries are very good. Again, three cents to basically tell me if you are going to invest in Bitcoin, maybe just a small amount because the volatility of the market is quite extreme. GPT Council is a really, really interesting way of using AI to inform your decision making because it can enhance and improve your understanding of different opinions and in the same way that a real council would influence the positives and negatives of a decision for you before you make up your mind on what to do one way or the other. The second Replit first AI application that we're going to look at is Baby B AGI by Yohei Nakajima. And you can see it here on Twitter and we'll click through and simply use that template to get started. Now we do need two API keys. So it's not just the API key for OpenAI here. If we want to give it web browsing powers, we need to go and get an API key from SERP API. And that's reasonably easy and the free tier has 100 searches a month. So we'll go and sign up for that and we'll pop those keys in. Now the way this has been built is a little bit different. We can't just stick the secrets in and off we go. We do need to change the code a little bit to reference those secrets or you could just paste those secrets in as raw text. But I would never suggest doing that because that is highly dangerous if you leave your repos public. Now this one is very exciting because just like Auto GPT, the point of this bot is to be a basic AGI. And we've seen a few of these. We've seen baby AGI and a few popping up. This implementation is ridiculously small in the lines of code and has some really, really interesting features. It's got prioritization of task list, which is really, really good, task serialization, and importantly, a summary of where it is and how it's getting on. Now, these are all frustrations I felt from Auto GPT, and especially those two entire days I lost to trying to make a video last week on Auto GPT. So let's see if, if this version of Baby AGI, Baby B AGI, is any better. Now, quick heads up before we start. This is still a work in progress. There's still a lot of errors that are uncaught, so you will get errors as you run it. But the beauty of AI is you can just click run with the same prompt and you'll get a different set of inputs and outputs and it'll work through in a different way where it may not error. So let's get started. Now adding two secrets and a bit of code, clicking run, we've now got access to this baby AGI. So let's give it a reasonably simple prompt. Let's say um, find out all about Replit and summarize the company in terms of a SWOT analysis. I'm not going to give it any more details than that and I'm going to click run. Now you can see the first thing it's doing is come up with a task list and those tasks look good and prioritized. And so the first thing to do is re research the company's mission, vision, and values. So it's gonna go out to the internet to get that. Well, there we go. And it's got, uh, it's done a, a Google search, pulled some information in. And you'll see as it's going there, it's showing us uh, which of the tasks are done, uh, which, are the, which are dependent on other tasks. And that's a really cool thing. This is the sort of thing that AutoGPT was lacking. And the reason it just started going in loops and, and not really being consistent about following on from what it was trying to do with the target in mind, Baby B AGI has priorities and it has dependencies. And those dependencies allow it to say which tasks need to come first. Now it's a really simple dependency model in this one, but you can see that it's going on there to 
um, summarize what it's doing and go to the next task. Analyze it and give us a SWOT analysis based on mission, vision, and values. So the next task is to find out the products and services and then do a SWOT analysis of that. And you'll see it's keeping going through this task list, improving, improving, until we get to the end where it combines those together and gives us an overall summary SWOT analysis. Now, interestingly, if you remember what we said about this is that this is based on OpenAI, so it's got no knowledge past 2022. It's also got access to the internet, so it can actually use Google searches to find information. But you'll see there that the summary it's come up with is pre us launching our app and pre us having a big push into power and power user features. So a lot of the things that it's talking about in terms of the places that we need to improve are places that we've already improved. So it's almost like it came to similar conclusions that we did a while ago. Now that's pretty cool, but that's the sort of business case that a lot of people watching this video will roll their eyes at and go, oh yeah, cool. This is revolutionary. This is amazing. This is the sort of stuff that we teach in schools. This is the sort of stuff that is taught in business school and MBAs, how to do things like this properly and how to do research. And now you can target a REPL at it, put in two keys, give it a prompt, click run, and get a good summarized, well thought out response coming from GPT-4. This is amazing. Let's look at a use case that I was struggling with with AutoGPT. Now, the thing that was really making me pull my hair out was getting it to create full web stacks and Flask apps and things like that because it would get obsessed with trying to install certain libraries. It would go off looking for the very best library it could use to do one small task in Python and was very, very frustrating to be a part of. Now, if we set this AI off with a task to build a Flask app, that is a Pomodoro timer, saving the timings and showing a list and dumping the app then into a folder called app. Let's see what it does. Well, first thing it does is it creates that task list for itself with its dependencies. And that seems like a reasonably good uh, task list. Now, I'm concerned about eight. Eight is likely to make it fail and crash, I would imagine, where we are at the moment, but let's see how we go. Some good ideas here. We've got code popping up, good. We're using post and get to send things to servers and pull them up. <laughs> and as it's trying to deploy it, it crashes exactly as I thought it would. Now again, this is because this is a work in progress. These things are brand new. And Baby BAGI in particular is very, very new. And the fact that it's about 300 lines of code says a lot about how, how fresh and powerful it is. But it hasn't got a lot of error handling just yet. So I think that works reasonably well. Let's try it with something maybe a little bit more straightforward. Let's go for a web feedback form, but everyone does that. So let's uh, add submit buttons, text areas, submitting JSON to a backend and a backend server that brings the JSON back with a success or failure message. Now it looks good to me again. I'm a bit concerned about deploy and monitor. They are tasks that I would expect a human to be working on. We've got a simple form being developed. It's working out how to build the submission and the JSON really well there. So it wants a MySQL or Postgres server. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, the, the prioritization of tasks and the way it's working on this is pretty cool. I'm not seeing a lot of code generated by this one. And, and yet, as soon as we get onto that one where we uh, need to summarize the report for all tasks, it does have a bit of a bad day. I can see the potential of a controlled AGI here, of a system that can just go off and do something and build it. The task list is something that I would say needs to be the thing that a human validates, because to me that task list is the thing that I'm very quickly seeing where it's going to crash or where it's going to be a problem. But no, those sort of things are things that can be expanded upon. Let's go even more vanilla. Let's make it build a landing page. I'm making it build a landing page for commemorative Robocop statuettes. <laughs> for no particular reason, but let's have a look. We've got a task list with a lot of design decisions in there. And that's interesting because those are the sort of things that humans do really, really well, design decisions and things like that. So yeah, good, good design ideas, yeah. Good color selections. Oh, decent bit of code here to show what's going on. Good copy in the page as well. Testing and debugging is working well. Now, I think the thing that this is not doing, which AutoGPT did, is creating further subtasks and going off in and doing those. And maybe that's where that needs to go. It's just that that, that branching structure of subtasks. But 
there we've got two really cool Replit First AI products. One that will give you dissenting opinions and ideas on a concept from multiple different roles of an AI. And the second, which allows you to give it a problem set and let it work at it with prioritized task lists. Both of those are really, really interesting implementations. It'd be great to see where these goes. But the beauty of it all is these are Replit First. So if you want to use them, you can go and use those templates with just a single click.